ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. Flames rip toward homes in Orange County. The Blue Ridge Fire doubling in size as more people are told to get out. Firefighters hoping a change in the winds will help their battle tonight. We are tracking the fire conditions right now. Plus, indoor businesses saved for another week. But San Diego Unified tells parents not to return for the rest of the year. Two massive fires burning in Southern California right now. The Silverado fire near Irvine is 11,000 acres, just 5% contained. In the last hour, we learned five firefighters have been injured in the Silverado firefight. And the Blue Ridge fire near Chino Hills has burned at least 10 homes. Tens of thousands of people are waiting to learn what will happen in these next critical few hours. ABC 10 News reporter Leah Pazetti is live in Chino Hills where flames are dangerously close to homes. Leah. Yeah, we've been in this Chino Hills suburb all day and we watched the flames quite literally come up just behind the homes in this neighborhood, but firefighters are doing an incredible job here. You can see some firefighters are still here right now, but I do want you to look at this hill over here. Look at that blackened hill. You see those smoldering spots still. You can imagine this is where the fire ripped through, and if you look, you can see those homes just below it still standing. As I said, fire crews doing an incredible job out here. So we're in Chino Hills right now. This is an area impacted by the Blue Ridge Fire, which has since grown to more than 15,000 acres, 0% containment at last check. Now, we do know that 10 homes have been damaged in this fire, but like I said, so many have been saved. All day, we've been watching crews save homes and use strategic tactics to protect neighborhoods. Many residents saying they have complete confidence that their homes will stay because of the hard work of those firefighters, but still, there is definitely a level of worry as flames burn dangerously close to homes here. It's definitely a scary sight to see, um, you know, right outside your house seeing flames. It's scary. It's kind of scary. If you think you're going to lose your own home, it's really a scary people thing. people sitting. So. Well, you have to just trust in the good Lord mm -hmm. and uh, he'll take care of everything. And a lot of people trusting firefighters and the good Lord, as you just heard, uh, staying. This area is technically under a mandatory evacuation right now, but I've been talking to lots of locals here in Chino Hills today who say that they trust firefighters and they also have been here before. They've seen fires rip through this area, so they chose to stay. So you see some people hanging out watching, uh, many people telling me they'll watch the fire and they'll decide when they feel like it's time to leave. But obviously, definitely, we should be listening to those evacuation orders, listening to those first responders. Now coming up at five o'clock, I'm going to take you inside a little bit more. We're going to hear about the emotions of people who are forced to leave their homes. Reporting live in Chino Hills, Leah Pizzetti, ABC 10 News. A relentless battle by those firefighters there. Thank you, Leah Pizzetti, reporting live from Chino Hills, and we will check back in with her. Meteorologist Angelica Campos is tracking the fire conditions now. Angelica. Hi, Kim. Yes, what an incredible battle, and we know the firefighters have had a really tough season. As we look at the warnings that are still in effect, obviously nothing here in San Diego County, but to our north, there's still a couple of red flag warnings in effect until 6 p.m. This one just to our north, and there's another one in the L.A. area also expect it to remain in effect until 6 p.m. this evening. So conditions should be improving as we go into the overnight hours. And they have already done that here in San Diego, not too windy at this hour. The winds will continue to subside, but relative humidity is very low. When you look at numbers like this, 10%, 11%, 8% in Warner Springs, you, Warner Springs, you probably even feel it in your hands of how dry it is outside. That creates a dangerous uh, setup because fire danger will remain in effect. It's going to be elevated through the rest of the week. As we look at the wind still gusting up to 21 miles per hour in Julian 12 in Mount Laguna, and most likely those winds will be picking back up later this week. I'll show you in our seven day forecast what to expect and where those winds will be the strongest. So dry out there. And remember, you can stay ahead of the weather conditions with the ABC 10 News mobile app. Turning now to the coronavirus, San Diego County remains in the state's red tier for at least another week. That means businesses can continue operating indoors with limits on capacity. The state says high testing rates 
helped the county avoid more restrictions this week. While earlier this morning, the state's website had San Diego County with a case rate of 7.1. The adjusted case rate now stands at 6.5. That's down from last week's official count of seven. Families in San Diego's largest school district won't bring students back to campus until January. That's the goal in phase two of reopening announced today. But ABC 10 News reporter Rachel Bianco is live outside the district offices where parents are rallying to return sooner. Rachel. Hi, Kimberly. There are actually two different groups here for a couple of different issues, but they are united in their belief that it is time for a change. A couple dozen of them are here because they believe the district's plan to reopen is too little, far too late. They think parents should have been given a timeline before the start of the school year. Parents have been holding these reopen San Diego unified rallies since September. Gina Smith is a family therapist and mom of an eight year old boy. She says the district hasn't done enough to get kids back on campus. Absolutely poorly all the way around. I mean, we have they've had seven months to prepare up until now and um, we've had no communication. Tuesday afternoon, school board and district leaders announced new details about when more students might return to campus. The goal is to bring back elementary students January 4th after winter break. Middle and high school students would return January 25th. Whether it actually happens depends on the virus spread in the community. We actually anticipate that San Diego County will move into the purple tier. Uh, sometime uh, in the next uh, uh, few weeks. Uh, we know that once the county moves into the purple tier, we can continue with our phase one approach, but what we cannot do is move then to phase two and, and the subsequent phases. Phase two would bring pre-K to fifth grade back to campus four days a week. They'd be split up into an a.m. or p.m. session. Fridays would be online. Middle and high school kids would be on campus two days a week, also split into two sessions, also online on Fridays. It's just surprising that eight weeks into the school year, we're just coming up with this plan. The district says its goal is to test anyone who comes on campus every few weeks. I don't think there is a single district uh, in this county or frankly in this country that can make the claim right now. Our concerns are or should be on par with heading into any normal flu season. Another live look at the rally. You can see some of the signs saying education is essential. It's time for change. They've been chanting, do your job. Now, phase one of the plan involves roughly 4,000 in-person appointments at over 100 schools. The most vulnerable students, that started two weeks ago, and school leaders say there have been no COVID outbreaks connected to that. Live in University Heights, Rachel Bianco, ABC 10 News. Updates on possible treatments for COVID-19 starts the news feed. Eli Lilly says it is still backing its potential treatment after research showed it doesn't help hospitalize patients. The company is now seeing how it impacts patients who are not in the hospital. Now with a week until the election, Facebook will stop accepting new political ads. It's in an effort to try and stop misinformation from spreading. It's important to note that the ads that are already on the site will keep running. Now a judge says the federal government cannot defend President Trump in a lawsuit brought by a woman who says that he sexually assaulted her in the 90s. Justice Department tried to represent President Trump. The judge says this case is not related to his employment with the U.S. government.